What is a net sheet? That's what I'm talking about today and it starts right now. Hey everyone, I'm Caitlin McKegg. I'm a realtor here in Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you for coming to my channel where I talk about Phoenix real estate and living in Phoenix. You are probably here because you're wondering what a net sheet is and I'm gonna tell you, but before we jump in, I just wanna remind you, subscribe to my channel if you wanna continue to see my videos about real estate and Phoenix. I post new videos every Friday and you don't wanna miss what I'm posting. We can also connect on social media where you can keep up to date there as well. If you have any questions along the way and wanna reach out to me by call, text, or email, feel free. I am happy to help however I can. Okay, what is a net sheet? A net sheet is used in real estate to help a seller understand an accurate estimate of their net proceeds when they sell their home. It basically gives a seller the bottom line of the cash that they're gonna walk away with after they've paid all the service fees in order to get their home sold. Now I know people always talk about realtor commissions, but that's not the only thing that you pay as a seller. Title has fees, escrow has fees, and you also probably have to pay off part of the loan amount that you were given in order to buy the house in the first place. The best way for me to explain a net sheet is to show you one. So let's look at this example. Okay, so here is a sample net sheet, and keep in mind that some of these fees could change based off of the title and escrow company or the location that you're in. Also, some fees may not pertain to you, but will in other situations. So this is really just a rough overview of how a net sheet is created and what is typically included in those calculations. So I'm gonna actually start down here where we talk about each fee. So here are the fees that you can expect as a seller to pay out of pocket as part of the process, more than likely. The professional service fee, this is related to the realtor commission and this is typically split between the buyer's agent and the listing agent that you pay as the seller. Also, uh, you will pay a title policy and there is a title policy for both the buyer and for the seller. As a seller, you do want to have a title policy because it protects you from any sort of cloud on the title that you may not know about that would prevent you from selling the home and also protect you if that is the case that you will not be uh, pursued for that or owed money the title policy actually covers that for you so having a title policy as a seller is actually very important escrow fees this is just a rough estimate they could be higher or slightly lower depending on the company Recording fees, about 150 bucks possibly. HOA transfer fee, this is not always included. So if you your house is in an area without an HOA, obviously this does not apply. Not every HOA has a transfer fee. And if they do, this can actually be negotiated between the buyer and seller. And oftentimes the buyer will pay the transfer fee. So this isn't always on here. What typically is on here for the HOA though is a disclosure fee. I don't have it on this list right here, but in the state of Arizona, if the HOA charges a disclosure fee, the seller is required to pay that. So you would see that. And in my experience, I've seen those fees around $400. Home warranty I have included in here as well. And this is just really in case the buyer asks for you to buy them a home warranty as part of the negotiation process in the contract. So this is something that may or may not be in here, but just an option to keep in mind that could be on there. And then home inspection repair estimates. I have this pretty high here at $1,000, but as the seller, you have to remember that the buyer is going to do an inspection and then ask you to repair items that are not up to the standard that they're looking for. Once that's all negotiated, you may come out of pocket for some repair costs. So all in all here, what's pay, what you're paying as a seller is around 34,000. But we still have all that equity in your house that you are going to get out once you sell. So let's say you sell the house for 500,000 and you do have to pay off 
part of your loan still. So you still have 288,000 of that loan to pay off. So out of this 500, the 288 is gonna go to pay off that mortgage loan first. Um, but then you also will pay any taxes to catch up on that as well, which essentially brings us down here to the estimated cash to seller or the net to seller. So this is the net sheet. Here is the bottom line. So you walk away from that sale with about $175,000. Not bad. Obviously all this varies based off of how much equity you have in your home, what kind of fees are being charged by the different title and escrow companies and realtor that you're working with, and whether or not you're in an HOA, et cetera, et cetera. But these are the types of things that you can expect to see on a net sheet. And this is how a net sheet is helpful for you. So you can really see the bottom line of what you walk away with after the sale. So there you have it. That is what's typically included in a net sheet and how that would be helpful to you as a seller. If you're considering selling your home and you wanna know what that net in your pocket would be, feel free to click on the link below for more information and I can help you find that out. Also, if you're just curious about what your potential home sale price would be, I have a link for an instant home valuation that might help you with that question as well. If you'd like me to pull some more information for you that's more specific, I would be happy to do so. Or if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me anytime by call, text, or email. Thank you for coming to my YouTube channel and watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. I'm Caitlin McKegg with HomeSmart.